Hi, Dion. How are you, man? Good. Right, where are you guys? We're literally in a Skoda Octavia wagon, kind of like the cars that follow you around. So we're doing this podcast from inside of a car. Yeah, nice one. I thought you were stuck in Auckland traffic. Oh, yeah. <laughs> First of all, well, congratulations. We'll talk about your polka dot jersey in a, in a little while. Um, but first of all, where are you? Where are we talking to you from? To be honest, uh, we've just changed hotels, so I haven't actually looked at a map to see where we are. But uh, I know it's close. It's on the peninsula, the Perest Peninsula, I think. Yep. So, it's, yeah, we're on the near the coast somewhere. Yeah. What's your day been like today? It's been a long day. Uh, a lot of waiting around. And, well, we did a recon for the team time trial in the morning. Uh, and our hotel was actually only 1k from the start, so we're able to go do that and then come back, shower and have some lunch. And then uh, we kicked off at about quarter to five from our, from our TTs. And how'd the TT uh, go? How was your ride? Yeah, the team, uh, and it's not really our specialty, the uh, 10 time trial. And we haven't really trained at it specifically like BMC, but yeah, I think it went well. But it could always go better, but. Yeah, we limited our losses to the bigger teams and for our GC rider, give my time to not lose too much time. Yeah, so just two two minutes 24 or something down, so that was uh, that was within what you were hoping? I think two minutes would have been uh, would have been really good, but we had a team time trial also on the Criterium de Dauphiné three weeks ago, and it was exactly the same distance, and uh, we lost about three minutes, 10 seconds, so definitely uh, an improvement. We've also got a new bike, so that definitely helped. Was it great to have sort of a more settled day in the saddle today? Obviously, the last first two stages there have been a lot of incidents, a lot of drama, a lot of excitement for you. Was it, was it nice just to have a bit of a more of a structured day in the saddle today? Yeah, it was. It was nice not to have the stress of, you know, the, all the nerves in the bunch and uh, every team, every man of his dog wanting to be at the front. And it just causes a lot of uh, tension and, and that's when crashes happen, and, you know, because the yellow jersey is up for grabs because it's a sprint stage, so... Yeah, it was nice to have some structure today. And I wanted to ask you a little bit about your journey to get to the Tour de France. You obviously rode last year. Um, yeah. The year before that, you, you were riding for a different outfit for um, for One Pro. How was that journey like going between different teams and sort of looking for that, looking for the team that's going to get you the best ride? And how hard is it to get onto the ride that will finally lead you to the pinnacle of the sport where you are now? I had signed two years with One Pro and at, at the Pro Continental level. Uh, and then they lost some sponsorship and they went back down to Continental for the second year, but I kind of wanted to keep my progression. So to be honest, it was really late in the season, uh, looking for teams and all the teams were full. So I was uh, just hoping to grab anything I could, could get really. And uh, it turned out that Wanty lost the rider in January. He quit or retired. Um, and they were originally looking at me. So that's what opened up. So they said, uh, sign here for two years or... Or, or nothing, so I, I really didn't have a leg to stand on, so I guess that's what brought me up to Wanty. I was just super happy to have, you know, at the end of the day, it's a job, uh, so yeah, I was really happy to do that and just get racing in Europe again and race some of these, these bigger races, and the Tour de France was just a cherry on the top, really. I just concentrated on the on the races that were coming up and didn't really think too much about the Tour, and everything just fell into place last year, and I uh, showed the team that I was I was worthy of of a spot. They took the chance and took me, and I think they've been happy, uh, really pleased with the performance last year, and I think that's helped their decision this year also. When you first heard about the team and, and got a sniff from the team, was your first question, what the heck is Wanty Group Go Bear? <laughs> uh, well, I, I had actually raced a little bit with them, uh, previously when I was on one pro when we did some races in Belgium so I knew who they were uh, wasn't to be honest wasn't really a team I looked at to, you know to say oh, I want to ride on the team then when I looked into it further and I saw the, the races that they got onto uh, got into and, and then their, their ambitions to obviously try and get into the tour and, and other big races it was um, to be honest it worked out really well yeah and, and what is for those people who don't know what Wanted Group Gobea is can you tell us what it is it's a building and construction company in the Wallonian area so it's the Wallonian area is like a French part of Belgium so and does the philosophy of the team um, suit you really well yeah I mean it took a couple of months obviously last year I missed team camp because uh, I signed in January and they had already 
all been at camp and met everyone, you know. It took a couple of months to sort of I guess, fit in because it's obviously a foreign team and they, most of them speak English, so it was, uh, wasn't was too hard. But meeting everyone on the road was a little bit difficult and getting the trust of other riders and, and the team management. So, Dion, um, I heard some of your pre-race interviews and uh, you talked a lot about yourself and the team having goals around um, order up the standings. You've achieved a pretty awesome goal really early on in the tour. How does that change or realign your thinking for the rest of the tour as you head forward? you really just got to take it day by day. It was, our main objective was to have our climber to be up on GC at the end of it. Um, and then obviously being a, a minor team in the tour was to get into breakaways and go to Jersey for publicity and uh, we've done that a couple of times already. You're really just going to take it day by day, and we just saw the opportunity that there was a, a jersey up for grabs, and we made a plan and went 100% for it. And yeah, it was uh, yeah really cool that I, I pulled it off, and a lot of pressure yeah. <laughs> taken off my shoulders because uh, all the sponsors are here as well. How hard was it getting into that breakaway yesterday morning? That breakaway that led to with uh, um, with Sylvan Chavanel. Was it? There was. It looked like there was a lot of uh, competition to, to be in that early breakaway. A few teams knew the the climb was quite close to the start, twenty eight km. So uh, and the opportunity to take the jersey. So there were a few guys going for it, and I think I tried once or twice. And then I also had another teammate that was sort of helping me out. He was also going to try and get in it, but the main goal was to get me in it, and then. Uh, yeah, I, I followed Kevin Dell and it, was, it wasn't the easiest thing in the world, but um, I knew he was a strong rider, so uh, we just got that gap gap straight away, and, and then off we went, and we were joined by another trek rider. Once the bunch set up and the gap was, you know, over half a minute, I knew uh, we were away. My director said, you have to start on the front, you know, at, at the start, even in the neutral, and I turned up a little bit too late to the start, so I was... Uh, about three quarters back in the bunch, so I had to try to weave my way through like I was started the race already uh, <laughs> in the neutral zone, so didn't want to be too much of a hassle to the other riders, but... Um, excuse yeah, me, excuse time. me, coming through, coming through, excuse yeah. me. But I think the people do realise, you know, want these smaller team want to get in the break, so... Yep. Um, yeah, it wasn't too bad. How are you finding the conditions? It's it's warm over there at the moment, the opposite of where we are here. Um, apparently it's a little bit warmer than, than normal and maybe even going to get hotter as the tour goes on. What do, you, what do you think of the conditions so far? Yeah, it's been really stinking hot, to be honest. Uh, from what I remember last year, it was, it was pretty hot in the tour also, so I guess it's just the time of year where they get pretty abnormal heat. And I've been training in Girona back in Spain where I'm based, so, and that's also been quite warm, so it's, it's been good preparation there. Can you take us onto that hill? That's that short climb that you did with those other with Sylvain Chavanel on the trek rider, and take us through what was going through your mind and and how you executed that perfect move to uh, put New Zealanders in a historical place we've never been before. I didn't want to be the first guy on the front, so I at the bottom of the climb I uh, ideally wanted to be third wheel. The trek guy wouldn't let me, you know, not pull it in, so he made me go second wheel, which was actually okay because I was on Chevin as well. Yeah, there was a lot going through my mind. There was obviously the crowd was screaming, and yeah, I was I was super nervous to be honest. I knew I had to just deliver and just sprint as hard as I could and and just time it time it perfectly, and I managed to do so. Once I crossed the, crossed the line, it was just this you know relief over my body that I knew I I'd done it, and all I had to do was just finish. Uh, same thing the bunch at the, at the end. Do you think it was just you were the fastest in those conditions? You you had the best legs at that moment? I think so, yeah. Full respect to Chevenel. He's a strong guy and I respect him for, I, mean, I think he's done about 18 Tour de France. So he's got the experience there and yeah, it was uh, also nice to get one up on him. You'd be forgiven now having um, got the, the polka dot jersey for not doing anything the rest of the tour, for just uh, <laughs> resting in the bunch. Um, but that's not what you're going to do, I take it. I'll just take it day by day and talk to the team and try and make a plan. So, yeah, I won't, I won't, won't go down without a fight. Also, at the same time, not, not getting the break every day because I uh, don't want to burn out for the, for the real climb stuff. Is there any camaraderie between the Kiwis on the tour? Do you um, hang out, catch up? 
talk with, you know, Paddy Bevan and Tom Scully as you guys ride along? Yeah, for sure. And lunch and also after the stages, we get each other messages. And I saw Paddy today after his um, statement with DMC and gave him a big hug. So. Uh, and how are you finding the um, more intense media interest as a result of your your success? Yes, yeah, it's, it's crazy. It's uh, yeah, just so much media media attention and yes, yeah, it's, it's truly mind blowing how much there is. And I do about six or seven interviews after the podium, and I don't even know who I'm getting interviewed by. And it's kind of just moved to the next one. <laughs> yeah. It's like a sushi train, but <laughs> <laughs> with nothing to eat. Nothing to eat. <laughs> well. Have a great rest of the tour. We'll be watching real carefully. Thanks very much, yeah. Great stuff. Thank you, Dion. Uh, all good. I'll talk to you guys yep. all the time. Cool, Brilliant. Man. We appreciate it. All right. See you later. See you, mate. Go well. All right. See you later. Cheers. Bye.